Greetings to your friend. Our Bible question this time is, must we eat the communion bread? We've got up here, why eat the bread? What's all this commotion about eating the bread, taking communion, and so on? Now, Paul speaks of the communion bread in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16, where he says, the bread which we break. So, in each year, Paul was teaching them to have a worship service where they broke bread. He says, the bread which we break, is it not the communion or partnership of the body of Christ? And we'll see as we go along. The Greek definition for that word there behind communion is the primary meaning is partnership. A secondary meaning, participation. A third meaning is fellowship. So whichever you want to use, communion, which is the common use, partnership, which I think is better, participation, fellowship. In the next chapter, chapter 11, Paul explains the life and death value of this bread. And a lot of people read their Bibles in a year and they go quickly over this and they miss it. He says in 1 Corinthians 11:20, 20, he says there, <clears throat> when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, supper or dinner or meal. When, when you Corinthians, you've been taught before this, when you do come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, meal, banquet, etc. This coming together worship meeting is to focus on remembering His broken body, not to have a big banquet meal like Thanksgiving or whatever. Now Paul shows Christ said it. Christ was the one who taught it to him. In verse 23, he says, I received from the Lord. He could have said, I received from Jesus. He could have said, I received from Christ. He could have said, I received from the Lord. That after Jesus was resurrected, he met with Paul face to face and instructed him, and here's some of that instruction. I received from the Lord, directly from the Lord. You can get it from Peter, you can get it from John or the other apostles. I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. He had already taught them about the Passover, the New Testament Passover. That, he says, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. What night was that? If you go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it was the Passover night. He took bread. Verse 24, And when he had given thanks, he prayed to God, thanking God for it. He broke the bread, and that's very significant. He, said, he broke the bread and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Meaning, this is symbolic of my body, which is broken for you, which is going to be broken. This was the same 24-hour period that he died. He was beaten and whipped and had a horrible crown of thorns on his head. This is, take, eat this bread. This is my body. This symbolizes my body, which is broken. It's broken bread. It, it symbolizes my broken body for you, for you, my disciples. And it's in Scripture for 2,000 years worth of Jesus following people. This broken bread is for you. So he says, Jesus speaking, do this, do this eating of the broken bread in remembrance of me. It's a worship memorial service in which we eat the wafer of bread. Now, eating this bread pictures, it symbolizes our participation in the sufferings of Christ. It brings to mind the sufferings of Christ. It rededicates our service to Christ. Jesus broke the bread just before his death, but after his resurrection, he made sure that Paul was going to be teaching the eating of the bread every Passover, once every year, annual festival, annual worship meeting, holy convocation meeting. He made sure that Paul was going to be teaching this service, this broken bread service, to the newcomers, the Gentiles that would be coming into the church. Luke records how Jesus instituted this new covenant worship symbol. 
Luke 22, verse 15. And then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Now, this was the last time Jesus would be eating. He ate the Old Testament lamb. He became, when he died, he became the lamb of God, the Passover lamb of God. Instead of some four-legged animal, he became the lamb of God. And Jesus changed the symbol into a broken piece of bread. So, what and when bread is a critical question we should all be asking. What and when bread? What is the bread picture like, picture symbolized? We've looked at that a little. When is the bread? Right? People do it whenever they want to do it. But no, Jesus said, gives the, gives the example in Scripture. Now, most Christians never seem to ask the question, when is this bread to be eaten? They, they just follow their leaders. They do whatever comes naturally. Jesus made the bread eating super, super important. Luke 22, 19. He took the bread and he gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to them saying, this is my body in symbol. He handed them some bread, but it was symbolic of his body, which is given for you. Remember, he said, greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. He was just about to give his body, lay it down in death. Do this in remembrance of me, said Jesus. So a year later on Passover, they did it only using the New Testament symbol of the broken bread, no longer eating the lamb, although they may have ate, eaten the lamb for some time. Okay, so it's a memorial of his dying. It's a dying service, a, a memorial service of his dying. The bread that was broken was the bread of the Passover Holy Convocation meeting. Now, you can take it any time in the year, but it's not the same. It's not obeying the words of Christ. Paul taught the Gentiles to eat the wafer on the same night Jesus was betrayed. And if you study your Bible, you always come up with the same answer. That was the Passover worship meeting night. Now, Paul shows that those Corinthian Gentile converts were paying a high price for eating this remembrance bread of Christ's broken body, but eating it irreverently. You'll see what I mean in verse 29. <clears throat> for he who eats and drinks, eats the broken bread, in, it, okay, most Bibles render this in an unworthy manner, which is not according to the Greek. The Greek says irreverently. So it should read, he who eats in irreverently, eats and drinks judgment. And judgment in the Greek can be condemnation. So if you eat the bread, the broken bread representing the broken body of Christ, if you in memorial of his death, if you eat it irreverently, you are eating it and eating judgment upon yourself, not properly discerning the Lord's broken body for you, as Jesus said. Verse 30, Paul explains, for this reason, what reason? Verse 29, for this reason, many of the Corinthian church members, many are weak, they haven't been healed, they're sickly, uh, and many sleep. And if you study that in the Greek, it is many have died prematurely. They died, they never haven't been healed of their illness, they haven't been brought back to energy, they just died prematurely. So Jesus had explained to Paul how important the taking of the bread of Passover was to salvation. The promise of eternal life is through the eating of this Passover bread. Now, I didn't make that up. Let's look at the next verse that we're going to look at, John 6, 54. John records Jesus saying, Whoever eats my flesh... Now, do we have to eat the flesh of Jesus that walked around 2,000 years ago? If so, where is that flesh? Right? He's saying, this is my body. This broken bread represents, symbolizes my flesh, symbolizes my broken body. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. 
Now these are the words of the master, creator of the universe. These are critically important words. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, if Jesus says it, we should obey his words. And we've got this to remind us that we need to be obeying the Lord's words. Anything he says in Scripture is there for a critically important purpose, and we should be paying close attention to what he says. Okay, Jesus is the master of the salvation process. Hebrews 5, 9. And having been perfected, he, Jesus, became the author, the beginner, of eternal salvation to all who, next two words, obey him. To all who obey him. If Jesus said, eat this broken wafer of bread, this communion wafer, this broken bread of Passover, holy convocation meeting, then we should do what it says. He's the author of salvation to all of those who obey him. So those who don't obey him, where do they fit? Where, how's that work? He's not the author of eternal salvation to those who don't obey him. Surely not, because uh, otherwise this verse would have no meaning. You just say, well, he's the author of eternal salvation to everybody. No, to those who obey him. So by the words of Jesus, we must eat the broken bread when he said and the way he said if we hope Jesus will give us eternal life. A lot of people say, ah, right, it's all taken care of. I gave my heart to Jesus. I'm going to heaven when I die and that's when he's going to give me eternal life. Not according to scripture. And if, you, if, you, if you're going to be sadly disappointed when after your death and you come back to life, you find out that you were told some lies and you didn't study the scripture and see it for yourself. So by the words of Jesus, we must eat the broken bread when he said, the way he said, if we hope that we're going to have eternal life. Now Jesus warns those who discount his words in Luke 6.46. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, says Jesus. What, why, like, why do you even bother to call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? If I'm Lord, then I am commander-in-chief, if you will. I am in charge of the process of salvation. If I am Lord, then do what I say. If I'm not your Lord, then just go ahead and do it any old way. You can eat the bread every day of the year. You know, is that going to do you any good? Not according to what Jesus says. Luke 6, 47, whoever comes to me, comes to Jesus Christ and hears my sayings, i.e. pays attention to them and does them, what does that mean? Obeys them, I will show you what it's like. And he goes on to say that this is a wise person who is building his house upon a rock. He is rock solid for salvation. Now, Jesus tells us his sheep hear and follow his voice and because they obey him, he gives them eternal life. It's so clear in scripture, if we just slow down long enough to read it slowly and soak it in and believe the actual words of Jesus Christ. John 10, 27, he says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. They hear what he says, they obey what he says, they follow what he says, his instructions, verse 28, and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So we must worship God His way, according to His words. John 4, 24, God is spirit, says Jesus, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth, and truth is what Jesus teaches. Now most Jesus te teachers tell people, they do not need to eat the Passover worship bread at the Passover. That's what is taught by most teachers. Each one of us must see the words of Jesus in the scriptures and decide for ourselves. Are we going to obey the words Jesus said in scripture or are we not going to obey? If we're not going to obey, we too may have vain worship. As Jesus said in Matthew 15, 9, in vain these people are worshiping me, Jesus, teaching 
as doctrines, the commandments of men.